Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Viking Virtual Training. Today, we're going to feature on the drop-down door speed oven. This is your mar moderator, Margaret McSweeney, and we're so glad you're here. And before we begin, a few introductions and housekeeping items. First of all, uh, if you could please remain mute during the call. If you have questions, please utilize the chat function to ask those questions during the training. All questions will be answered at the end of the training presentation. For your information, we will be recording this training se session. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to Sue Bailey. She is the Director of Go-To Market Strategy at Viking Range. Also, Bryant Watson. He is Viking's National Product trainer. And then, of course, the person who needs no introduction, Chef Jamie Larita, the executive chef and brand ambassador for Middleby Residential Chicago Showroom. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Welcome to Chicago. As you know, we're in Suite 137 in the Merchandise Mart, and it's freezing here today. And I can't wait to hear about this new drop-down microwave. It's all the talk, and I'm so glad that all of you guys are here. Now, Let's talk about microwave cooking for a second, shall we? Like, as a chef, do I use a microwave? I actually don't have one in my kitchen. I have several in the showroom and I kind of miss it at home because there are things that we love cooking in our microwaves. I know there's a lot of people out there, we get them in the showroom all day long, that heat up water in their microwave, but cooking is something you can do in a microwave. For example, what's good about it? You can control the cooking time, right? That's one good thing and you can control the power usage as well. You know, they don't retain the heat like a regular conventional stove would. They don't heat up your kitchen like they would either. And it heats up the food and, I'm sorry, the water content within the food um, using overall less energy. So there's so many recipes out there, guys, when it comes to microwave cooking. I know that those there are those cooks out there that use it kind of exclusively. So today, Believe it or not, this Italian chef is gonna be making pizza in the microwave. I know it sounds crazy, and it is, but it actually works. Graham and I had some today in the showroom, and he actually liked it. So it's a quick thing, it can happen in under five minutes. So if you have that pizza craving at home and you don't wanna be like me, the person that will eat the entire pizza, and you just wanna get like a, a taste for it, here's a great recipe, so let's start it right over. So, very, very simple. You get some all-purpose flour. That's about six tablespoons right there. And then I get a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And then about an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. And then I put in a nice pinch of salt, two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm making all kinds of noise for you guys today. So you wanna use some good olive oil at that. And then I like to season mine with a little bit of garlic salt or garlic powder. And then you wanna add about, I would say six tablespoons of milk, or even today I had some extra heavy cream. And all you're doing right now, guys, is basically making your dough. I know it sounds crazy. Now this can be made in a bowl or it could be made in a mug. I'm just gonna add a bit more flour to mine right here to bring it together. Woo, that's a lot more flour. And basically you make a dough right here. And I'm gonna use my hand. Who thinks this is crazy besides Jessica Alt? Right? Then, you bring it together real quick. Bring all your ingredients together. And you basically put it, here's your flour, here's your dough. And you basically put it on the bottom of a bowl like this. Very, very simple. Now this cooks in, believe it or not, under three minutes. In the mug, you wanna split the recipe in half. It actually cooks in a minute and a half, okay? So what I do is I get some tomato sauce and you can use anything left over and it doesn't have to be pretty, right? You just kind of layer it. Um, it could be pizza sauce. It could be sauce from a jar. 
I'm just going to throw in some leftover, basically a ragu from the other night. And then I've got some mozzarella cheese. Come on now. Now you want to add a little bit more fun to it. You want to add some pepperoni. Here's some Parmigiano Reggiano. Okay. And then I've got some oregano and some chive right here. And then I had some roasted peppers in my seven series refrigerator in the showroom. So I thought I would make it vegetarian and you can just spread that around, spread that love around. And then maybe season with a bit of pepper, just like so. In a mug, it can be a personal little mug pizza. In a bowl, it could be you or just me or the two of us. Graham and I can split this. And then basically, it's that simple. I'm going to open up my microwave here. And I'm going to do that for three minutes, guys. And that's it. We're going to come back to this afterwards. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. And then we're going to taste it. But now we're going to hand it over to Brian. Actually, we're going to go to me, Jamie, if that's OK. Sue's going to take or it from Sue. here. You're or both, Sue, you're both either one of us, exactly. Hey guys, glad to not see everybody, but actually kind of see that everybody's here. Got a great group um, on the call. I can see I got some of the Canadians, looks like, like Al from Hawaii is with us. We've got lots of great ones. A special shout out to my friend, Elizabeth Wakeful. Um, Elizabeth is actually my go-to person and friend at Sharp. Um, and so we're gonna be talking about this great new oven that we have. Um, I think as all you guys know, I've said it before when we've talked about microwaves, Viking has a long term and, and a very successful relationship with Sharp. They are a great partner with us. Elizabeth brought this to me. Um, I should tell you how long ago it was, over a year ago, I guess, um, when they had this available to us. And it was certainly one of those products we needed to add to the line. We get asked for this model all the time. So we're very excited to introduce the drop down convection speed oven. I do love the speed aspect. We're going to talk about that. Um, but again, this is that one product the field has really asked for. So before we go to Bryant, who is in Greenwood, we are going to talk just about a couple of things real quick with this particular product. One thing I want you guys to know is that the power supply does need to be the 220, 240, um, because guys, we are using a 1600 watt convection heater along with microwave. We do need it to have that better electrical um, connection. It is also recommended that you use a separate circuit. Uh, to for just this particular product. So um, th that's something to be remembered as you guys are selling it to the customer. Cookware, this is a question that always comes up about what can you use? Everybody kind of knows what you can use in a microwave, but not sure what you can use um, with the fact that it's a convection and a, and a speed oven. So one thing I will tell you guys up front as a tip is the use and care manual for this model and also for our regular convection microwaves are a must have and you must look at it because there is so much that these models can do that we don't really realize. But just, I wanted you to kind of see something that's in the, um, in the manual is you can see that it tells you a little bit about what utensils and coverings and things can you use. So you can see that it says no for aluminum foil and microwave and speed, but it's okay in the convection bake roast and grill. So just a great way to look at it. Um, you can see that metal cookware is a no-no in microwave and speed, but it's perfect in the convection. So again, you don't have to remember these things. They're all in the use and care manual for you. So I just wanted you to kind of touch on that because that was one question I got asked the first um, when we first actually introduced it. So now we are going to travel miraculously to Greenwood, Mississippi. Brian, all right, Brian, if you'll back that up just a little bit so I can see the whole um, oven. There we go. There's my friend Brian. A little bit more. There. I want to see the whole oven. Keep going back. Keep going back. There we go, perfect, perfect. So you guys can kind of see, this is a 30 inch wide oven. The thing that we always make sure that we do is we wanna make sure that we are matching the rest of our oven line. So um, Sharp has a great industrial design team. They worked with our industrial designer, Thomas, to make sure that that door detailing is gonna match and line up perfectly with the door detailing that we have on our other professional ovens. So it is just, Great, we do pay some additional tooling for this to happen, but 
Sharp does a great job of making sure that our oven looks unique to us, which is which is great. This guys is a great all-in-one oven. You've got microwave, you've got convection, you've got roast and grill, plus you've got that speed, all of these things. Brian is gonna go over that control panel a little bit later, um, but it's so easy to use. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna actually look at the inside of this oven cavity. I'm gonna give you guys just a couple of things you need to know about. Beautiful oven cavity, guys, very large. Notice it has the different racks, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, this uh, cavity is a 1.6 cubic feet, so it's plenty big enough. It is that stainless interior. It will fit a 9 by 13 inch pan. So you guys know I can cook and choose not to, but I do live and die by a 9 by 13 you know, um, inch pan uh, to be able to use in here. There is an interior light, which you can see, which is always nice. It is a 16 inch diameter turntable, guys. So it is a very big turntable. Um, it is removable. It does move clockwise and counterclockwise. Like I mentioned before, 1600 watt convection heater. It's a 900 watt microwave cooking power. Now guys, this is something you do have to pay attention to because if this was just a regular conventional microwave, it might have 1200 watts of power, okay? But because we're using it with the convection heater, it has 900 watts of power. So if you're using it as microwave only, you might have to cook your food a little bit longer. You guys that do a lot of the uh, hot pockets or lean cuisines like I do, know that the back tells you based on your wattage of your oven, how long you have to cook the food for. So this one is 900 watts. There are safety door latches, so this door will not operate unless the um, door is actually shut, which is great. Um, we, we won't get close enough to see the convection air openings, but they're in there. I do love the accessories. So you've got the high rack, which is the one you would use for baking. You've got the low rack. Um, and then there's two oven racks. Brian, I don't know if I told you to actually bring, to have out the oven racks or if you've even got them there, but there are I two um, actual yeah, that, that ship with it. So you've got those things that come also, which is great. So that's just kind of a quick look at the, um, at the inside of it. What we're gonna do, cause I know some of you are like me and you like to see what it is I'm saying cause you can retain it a little bit better. So we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint for just a few minutes while I actually talk you through how some of this works. And Jessica's gonna get me a couple more slides into it. Just a minute, I think, maybe. It's not moving for me, Jessica. There we go, there she is. All right, I do wanna start with the speed cooking, okay? Cause we'll talk about microwave and, and convection and all of that. But the speed cooking, why, how we get this aspect of speed is that 1600 watt convection heater that we were talking about. Sharp does a fabulous job, you guys, of the engineering of this and the testing of this to make sure that it's going to work the way that it should. So there's really two speed options. You've got speed bake and speed roast. So notice here, the speed bake, this function provides superior results for baked goods, okay? These are the things I love. These are the cookies, the cakes, um, the breads, those sort of things. For things that require more than 20 minutes of baking time. Now notice this, the speed bake cooking function goes between 90% of the convection oven and 10% of the microwave. You don't have to do anything. It's already engineered and programmed that way. And this is gonna give you those really golden exterior um, texture. In interior is gonna be very moist. Um, like I said, cakes, quick breads, muffins, those, set of, those sort of things. This um, cooking mode defaults to 325 degrees, okay? So you can change that, but that's just, if you were to push it, that is the default temperature is going to be 325 degrees. Um, speed roast, I do like the speed roast. So guys, this is great for those larger, denser cuts of meat. Um, even that whole chicken, those sort of things that you're gonna do. It's going to, that's cooking function, it's going to take the oven's power 70% of the convection oven and 30% microwave power, okay? So what this does is this allows for that reduced cooking time because that microwave is going to directly and rapidly heat the food internally while that convection function circulates the air. And that's gonna give us that browning and that crispy texture while keeping it very juicy on the inside. Now the default temperature for this one is 300 degrees. Now notice this last statement I have on the slide guys. 
the temperatures can be changed, but not the microwave output. Okay, so those are going to stay consistent throughout that. As a comparison, before we move on, um, the speed roast. So the, we did a test and we took a, it was a 3.9 pound chicken, but let's say it was a four pound whole chicken. We did it using the speed roast and the regular convention roast. Okay, guys, if you use the speed roast, this is going to reduce the cooking time by about 20% over the convection roast. Okay, so it was about 61 minutes to cook the chicken versus the 77 minutes that it was on the convection roast. But here's the real kicker. We did not have to preheat the oven. So we saved ourselves another 10 minutes by not having to preheat the oven with the speed roast. So when you put those kind of together, you're looking at a 30% reduction in the amount of time it took to cook that chicken. So that's why we're talking about it being a speed oven from there. So great, great cooking ability there. The next thing we're gonna move on to is going to be the convection. Now, I like to sell this and I sell our convection microwave the same way. If I've got somebody who's got a smaller kitchen, maybe they only have room for a 30 inch range or something. This guys is a great second auxiliary oven because I can bake in this oven. Okay. You can see I can bake, I can roast, I can grill. I mean, those cookies, those were actually cooked in that speed oven when we were doing the photo shoot. So you can do great cookies in there. And this convection is just like, you guys know what convection is. You've got hot air circulating through the oven cavity to aid in the browning and the, the even cooking of these things. So again, I need to put in a, a pan of biscuits. I need to put in some cookies. I need to just cook a casserole. I don't want to use my um, range oven or maybe I'm using it for something else. Use this as a convection bake. I can grill, I can do all these great things. So. This oven can be programmed with 10 different convection cooking temperatures. So guys, there's really nothing that we can't do on that convection. Bryant's gonna show you a little bit of these things because I love the more menus, which Bryant's are gonna, Bryant is going to talk about a little bit um, just because it's already got so many great pre-programmed things in there. And then the next function we're gonna talk about is going to be the microwave function. Now. Guys, traditional microwave cooking, just like I was talking about, I can cook my Hot Pocket, my Lean Cuisines, all those things that you guys know that I love to eat. The thing that I do like about this is there is an automatic sensor that has, there's some programs in there that it really takes the guesswork out of how do I use my microwave. And you'll see on here that we say the sensor is a semiconductor device that detects the vapor, the amount of moisture and humidity that's emitted from the food as, as it heats. All right, so this sensor adjusts the cooking time and power level for various foods. So any of you that have used our um, current convection microwave and that sensor that it uses, it truly takes the guesswork out. You just program it, it goes, and it is going to come out perfectly every time. There's 10 different cook foods for the sensor program. You've got reheat, which I really like guys, because then I'm not over heating my food when I need to reheat it. Um, and again, it's going based on the moisture. Popcorn, which you guys all know Brian as well as I do. You know he's gonna talk about that popcorn feature that this great oven has. What I love guys are the more menus because it's got this melt, soft, warm option so that if I want to um, just soften butter, there is a mode for that. I don't have to worry about it melting all over my um, turntable. I want a warm syrup for you guys up in Canada that, you know, we love that maple syrup. I, you know, I do that. I just want to warm that. There is also a setting, I believe, for um, the warm cereal. So again, taking the guesswork out of how you are supposed to and how long you're supposed to use the microwave. So all of that just so, so easy to use. And Brian's going to go through a little bit of that if I'll hurry up and finish my talking side. All right, just a couple of other features I want you guys to know about in this. There is a multiple sequence cooking, okay? What this allows the oven to do is you can program it for up to four automatic cooking sequences for the microwave mode and two automatic cooking sequences with the preheat for the speed and bake. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. I'm not going into detail on that. It is fully explained in the use and care manual. Again, we worked with Sharp. That use and care manual is very easy to read. It is very easy to follow. Everything you need to know step-by-step step, is done in that use and care manual. The, 30 plus, the plus 30 seconds, easy way to, to add cooking time. 
it's shut off, it's not quite done, I can hit that plus 30, 30 more seconds of microwave, we are good to go. I do love the safety lock, which will prevent um, unwanted of an operation by our children or hey, even our husbands, if we don't want them op op operating that microwave. Um, it can be set on the control panel to be activate, deactivated or locked. Uh, demo mode, uh, that is in the use and care for all you guys that um, need to use it for showrooms. Uh, there is a demo mode so that it won't actually go through everything as far as working, but you can demo the great displays and all of these things from that standpoint. So I have done my very fast talking as I usually do. We've got about five minutes or so for Bryant to go through that control panel. Before we actually switch to Bryant, I want you guys to kind of see it up close. Again, there are so many things that you can do with this oven that you're seeing the control panel there on the screen. Right below there, you can see kind of the cheat sheet, okay? Because what you're not gonna do is you're not going to have your use and care manual out every single time you wanna do it. But what this cheat sheet does, as is it tells you, and Brian's going to go through it, if I want to defrost ground beef, that's number one. So it, 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 that is very attractively done um, on the control panel so that that label will stay on there so that you can use it as you're cooking. So now let's magically go to Greenwood, Mississippi with Bryant. All right. So look, I have hooked this around to try to get it as close as possible. And I'm glad Sue showed you the actual menu because the one that is on the actual microwave itself, it's right here, but it's a silver piece, and so it blends in seamlessly. Of course, you know, I am a half a step away from blind, so I kind of uh, remember it where I want to go. So Sue talked about a couple of functions on that that she really loves, and one of them is the more menus function. So here you have your bake. All of this is under convection. Your bake, your roast, your grill, speed roast, speed bake. But then I want more menus, so I'm going to go to more menus. And then I'm going to go down here and start looking at what I want to cook. So if I press number two, that's cookies. That's cookies on the more menu under the convection. And then all you do is just follow what it says. Touch start. It's ready to go. So I want to clear that out, but I want to go back to more menus again. And say I press number seven. Well, that's whole chicken right there. So I don't have to wonder. Now it tells me to enter my weight. I enter the weight. Say it's a three-pound chicken. Okay. Three pound chicken, and then I close the doors, touch start, and it goes into a preheat. So it walks you through everything that you need to do and actually puts you in the mode where you need to be. So another thing is if you're doing regular menu, say you're doing microwaving. Sue talked about on the microwave and on the more menu, she wants to melt butter. Well, I know I'm going to touch number one, and there is butter. Okay? Now, touch quantity. So I want to touch one again, two tablespoons. Now it's ready to go. So once again, all you have to do is get in the right mode and it will tell you everything you can do in that mode. So it kind of walks you through. So it's kind of a mistake proof thing. And once you've used it, you're still going to tinker around a little bit because it's preset. And so once the chicken is done, I taste it. It may not be pretty uh, and brown as I would like it. So I'm going to hit that extra 30 second part and then we're going to go with it from there. Okay. Then you have your regular microwave functions. I want to do popcorn. That's what I really love. See, it says a regular bag. I'm going to touch start. But if I touch it again, now it goes to mini. So if I don't want the big bag, I go to mini. And then I just touch start, and it's ready to go. I love popcorn. I would eat microwave popcorn while I'm at work. I'll eat it if the game has already come on, and I can't pop it on the, on the range or anything like that. And so this really helps me out from the point of doing it like that and having the ability to not have a big bag and still have a mini bag. Who also talked about uh, locking out the husband. If you don't want him to use the uh, microwave, so what you want to do here is go and hold the uh, timer setting for three seconds, and it should lock it out and go to power. Hold on, do it again. Never works when you want to. But you just stop and hold it. I might be touching the wrong one. You hold it for three seconds. There it is. Lock on. I just thought about it. Stop. So now it's locked. So anything comes up, you come up here, a child starts to touch it. They can't do anything with it. I don't care what they do until you take it out. And all you have to do is press and hold again for three to five seconds. And it's unlocked. The lock is off. Now it's ready to do anything you want to do. Anyone in the showroom. If you want to have this in your showroom and put it in a demo mode, and this is what me and Sue was talking about yesterday, 
You go to your timer settings and you have to press it eight times, okay? Okay. Demo. There he is. Demo is on. Okay. Now, anything you want to do, you can do any function up here. It will show it. It will bring the time. It will bring the weight. It will bring what to do next. It will bring up the preheat, but it won't actually let the oven start to be uh, start the cooking process. So there you have it. A few of the main things on the menu. So much more you can do in here. Speed roast, speed bake. If you're doing speed roast, one thing I noticed about it on roast, it will not let you select a temperature lower than 400 degrees. So if you press roast. If you press one through six, you're not going to get anything on one through seven, which is 375. But if you press number eight, number nine, or the zero, 400, 425, 450, then it will go into a preheat mode on the roast. So it actually stops you from picking the wrong temperature that you actually should be using also. And now back to who am I going to, Jamie? Yep, we'll go back to Jamie now. Thank you, Brian. That was great. All right. Well, Bryant, that was uh, that was amazing. What a good looking oven, right? Let's talk about the uh, let's just talk about this pizza, shall we? First, I mean, guys, honestly, not going to lie. This is a pizza bowl here in Chicago. We do a deep dish style, right? I did it in a bowl. Fantastic. But look at that. I mean, it's actually pizza. You've got your. Sue, would you eat this? I, I was just going to say, Jamie, I will actually eat, except for the green stuff in there. I will eat everything but the green stuff in there. I mean, it's actually kind of delicious, and you can make it your own. But let's talk about, like, why I love this new microwave. First of all, you've got that drop-down door from a design perspective. Who has that, right? It's a really cool look. And versus, you know, the swing door, it's a nice new drop-down door. It matches all of the design details obviously of what Viking does. So it's just another great idea for someone that wants to incorporate or integrate another piece of equipment that matches everything else. There's no trim kit on it. So it's uh, 30 inches wide and it doesn't need a trim kit. So it fits really nicely with, let's say another oven. The other thing is that it's a standard uh, mount, not a proud mount. Oh, actually, no, it is a proud mount. So you can't do it flush. So remember that, that it has to be mounted proud. Only comes in stainless. So it does really look nice with other stainless products in your kitchen. If you're doing stainless steel ranges, refrigeration and everything else, it's a nice match to everything else. Um, pairs with all the wall ovens and all the warming drawers and everything else. But you gotta leave that two inch space guys for airflow. You have to remember that. This has been a great presentation. I know here in freezing Chicago, Graham and I are gonna split this warm pizza. Thank you everyone for coming and getting this new training on this new product. And I have nothing else to say except for, I'm probably gonna get my Italian heritage card taken away because of what I did with the pizza. But you know what, Grandma? It's gonna be worth it because the microwave is just great. Thanks guys. Great, thank you so much everyone for attending. Please make sure to catch Chef Jamie and Chef Jackie on the Viking Facebook live feed for some amazing cooking videos. Look for a follow-up email with assets from today's training as well as Jamie's recipe for microwave pizza. A reminder, we are hosting virtual showroom appointments out of our Chicago and Irvine showrooms. Please visit our websites and talk to your Middleby Residential District Sales Manager for more information. This can concludes our training today. We will remain on the call to answer any questions that you may have asked in the chat. Um, and I do see some questions. Yeah, uh, Jane, I do. So I do too. Yeah. Yes. If you want to go ahead and address those. Well, Jamie, I can answer Rick, my friend Rick's question. What is a browning dish? I have no idea. What is a what? A browning dish. A browning, browning dish. It was, uh, maybe it was Maybe it was on my, Rick, was it on my slide? Yeah, it was on that first. Where that came it, from? It was on yeah, I would imagine it's a dish. Yeah, made, I don't know. I imagine it's a dish that, in, that assists with browning. So um, it was on the, it was <laughs> there on we the go. first so, Sue, it was on the first slide. It was on the first slide where yeah. you were talking about what, what, pot, what pants and utensils could yeah. be used in which function. I just I never heard of that out of the Houston care manual. 
I have yes. not so either. So obviously you nor I are very good folks, Rick. It's a certain it's a certain type yes. of like pyro ceramic that helps assist with browning dishes, uh, meals. Okay. So it's nice. a certain type of uh, dish that assists in the browning process. Excellent. So now, Rick, I want you to go out and buy one. Okay. Make sure you have a browning dish yes. in your um, thing. So then Heather asked, can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, can it be installed under the counter in an island? Yes. So if you guys want to look at the install manual, um, it does. We kind of show you could do it under cooktops, guys, not induction cooktops, as y'all know. Um, but under the other ones, you could. Great way to do that. Pat asked and Jamie answered already. Cannot be flush mounted, guys. Um, so that is not an option. Ashlyn, there's not a broil element. You're just using the very high speed convection to help kind of brown and do those um, things from a grill. So it's not a true, it's the same thing we do in convection microwaves um, anyways. Do you have to take the racks out before using the microwave function? Um, I'm going with no, I hope not, because I leave mine in all the time um, from there. And uh, it's never been a problem. And no, Jackie does not act, we, there is no ventilation because this one's not going over a range. It's, it's gonna be built in to the wall um, with the ovens or even under the counter. So not gonna be able to go with that. Um, John, yep, Jamie does it all, I agree with that. Um, do I have an estimate when they will be available? Um, we've got, well, we had some in inventory, I can't say guys, because they have done really well. So we are getting shipments regularly um, on these. So that would be a question for um, the distributor on, on there. And guys, I'm sorry, I don't have my price here with me. I don't know if anybody else can answer that quickly. I don't know what our UMRP is off the top of my head, sorry. Should have had that one. UMRP then. is 22.99. Any other questions? To 22.99. Nice. Thank you very much, everybody. You're there welcome. we go. And Jamie, if you don't stop eating that pizza, Jamie, you're still Guys, I'm serious. Pizza. I'm not joking. This is actually really good. <laughs> and I'm, it's not in my diet plan right now, but it's actually like the thing I crave the most, Sue, is pizza. And I'm like, in he yeah. I'm heaven in, in the showroom. It's really good. I, I love pizza also. I love pizza also. Okay. So um, uh, Maria gave us a little more um, info on the browning dishes. Pyro um, ceramic material with a metal embedded. Nice job, Maria. Um, all right, so guys, any other questions? You can come off mute if there is. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining us. The pricing is actually going to go to twenty three right. seventy nine. Did you hear me? Perfect. Thank. I did. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate okay. that. Thanks for everybody for joining. See ya. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.